All right, today I want to talk about synchronous and asynchronous functions in JavaScript. And the fact that JavaScript is a single-threaded language. Now, we have a new thing called service workers that were added a few years ago, but that aside, the majority of the JavaScript that you're going to be right is being run as a single process in your computer. And that means, for the most part, you write your code top to bottom in kind of a procedural way. Looking at this example here, I'm declaring a couple of variables here. So I've got my shortcut for the console.log statement. That's just to be able to write things out here. But we have a couple of variables, a and b. I want to run this line of code and then this line of code. And by default, that is what JavaScript is going to do. It's going to want to execute this line and then execute this line. Now leaving aside the fact that there's hoisting and these variables will be declared up at the top in the first pass and then the second pass we're assigning the values it's still running from a top to bottom kind of way that allows us to do things like this I've got a variable here and I'm setting it equal to a function the function will return the value 5 the second function will return the value 50 now I run these functions one after the other and not a problem. If I needed to use the value here before b1, that's not a problem. I can insert something inside here. I can take the value that's coming back from this function before I move on to the next line. There is a delay that happens here. I'm putting this inside here. So any expression that I want can be assigned inside of this before the next line of code executes. This can be an expression I can turn this into an immediately invoked function expression doing this. And then I can do the same thing on the next one. Now I am running this line of code, which means I'm running this function and I'm getting the value 5 and I'm putting it into here before I move on to the next line. JavaScript wants to do this. It wants to execute things in order. So we change this now so the values a1 and b1 are no longer functions now they are the return values I run this code I'm getting the exact same thing here it's able to do this it's able to execute something it doesn't matter how big it is it comes to this line of code the JavaScript interpreter looks at this and says oh I'm supposed to run this okay I'm going to run this before I do anything else before I move on to the next line of code this function could have 800 lines of code in it. It's still going to execute the whole thing before it moves on to the next line. When we come down here, I've got another example where I'm using the value passed in here. And this allows us to do things like this. So function a2 accepts a parameter and returns five times whatever that number is. The second function just returns the number 50. I can put b2 inside of a2 as the value being passed in. So I'm passing this function into here, and then it realizes, oh, you know what? I've got to run b2. I've got the parentheses here after the name b2, so I've got to run that. This function's going to run. The value 50 is then going to be placed inside of here and returned as five times that number. But again, it's still just this line's executing before this one. And now we get down to here, this line of code has to execute, and the thing on the inside, the innermost function, the innermost value, that's the thing that's going to be read first. But it's still this line of code before anything that comes after it. Okay, that's synchronous code. That's what JavaScript is doing most of the time. But it also does asynchronous code. And this is where things can get a little bit confusing and your variables can be sometimes not the value that you expect. So you have to understand the difference between the two of them. With asynchronous code, what we are talking about is set timeout. So I'm telling the computer, I want to run this function, but I don't want to do it until at least a thousand milliseconds into the future. So, or 10 minutes from now is when the minimum time elapsed, once that's passed, that's when I want to execute this function. I want to make a geolocation call. So I'm telling the computer or the phone or whatever the device is, go and try and find out where I am. Give me the geolocation coordinates. That's not an instantaneous thing. The next line of code in my script 
is not going to know the value of that. I'm going to have a, a callback function which is going to give me that value, but I don't know when that's coming back. Promises, fetch, Ajax calls, when you're calling off to a server somewhere to say, give me some data back, I don't know when that's coming back specifically. I'm hoping that at some point in the very near future I'll get it back, but I don't know exactly when. And because I don't know exactly when, my next line of code, it doesn't know the value. So I'm now in an asynchronous situation. Something is running, but it's kind of been put off to the side. The main JavaScript thread says, you know what? I've started the process for you, but I don't know when I'm going to get the answer, so I'm not going to waste time sitting here waiting for that to come back. I'm going to continue on to the next line of code. I'm going to see what else I can do until that gets back. When that gets back, if you want me to deal with it, fine, I will. But until then, I'm going to keep going. That's, that's the crux of what asynchronous functions are all about. So let's do a little example here. Promises are a great example of asynchronous function. And I've got some videos to pro promises and what promises can do. I'll put a link to the playlist about promises in the comments. But for now, let's just do a simple example. Um, we'll use some set timeouts and then we'll do some promises. I'm going to create another variable here, a3, and we'll set that equal to 100. Now, if I were to log out that value, fair enough, run, there it is, the 100. That's the value that came back. Now, if I did a line of code here, if this line of code is synchronous, it will run first. But if it's asynchronous code, it will actually run after this, or potentially run after this. So set timeout, I'm going to have a function that is going to increment a3. So we're changing the value of a3, and I'm going to say here, well actually I could do something like this, one millisecond later. So I'm setting the value of a3 to 100. I'm saying run this function to increment a3 in one millisecond, and then write out the value of a3. So we'll run this code, and the value is still 100. That's because this is asynchronous code. This is something that's being set aside. JavaScript, the main thread, is looking at this line and then saying, OK, I'll set that aside to run later. I'm going to finish my main thread. I'm going to finish all the stuff that I meant to do. Then I'll come back and take a look at this. Even if I put 0 as a value in here, I've still got 100. A3 did not get incremented. If I go inside this function and I console log out A3 here, now this will be the 101 because it's happening afterwards. So even though I said 0, this set timeout function is still being put aside. It's off the main thread. The synchronous stuff runs first. When all of the synchronous stuff is finished, then the asynchronous stuff gets to come back in and be, re be run. We can come inside here, do another set timeout. If I do log A3 here, I get the same thing. I will get the 101 showing up here. There it is. I haven't even specified a value, so there it is. Those two are my asynchronous ones. If I remove this one, there it is. That's the 101 showing up here. This is still happening after this one because this was put aside first and then this one was put aside afterwards. The key here is that they are asynchronous and they're being set aside to let the synchronous stuff finish first, then they're coming back to run. So one other example, let's look at a promise. I think promises are an excellent um, implementation of asynchronous code. So there's a basic promise. It's not doing anything right now. It's just an empty promise. I'm going to log out p. Let's take a look to see what we're getting back. And there it is, 
even before the 101, you'll notice. I'm running out here. This is happening before this is. Even though this was set to zero, and even though a promise itself is asynchronous, the value that's being put inside of here is this pending promise. It's something that in the future there's going to be a value coming back. So I'm getting that value because it has to put something into this variable. It's putting in a pending promise saying, okay, you're a container. At some point there's going to be an answer coming back to your promise, but for now it's a pending promise. Write that out. Then this and this, the asynchronous code, is off and running. Just like the promise is off and running and it's waiting for a result to come back. So promises need a resolve condition and a reject condition. They need, these are just names, they're the names of the functions to call when good things happen, when bad things happen. So if I say resolve and that's going to be the value that comes back, even though this is resolving immediately, there we go. This resolved immediately because I didn't delay it at all. If we did a set timeout, I'm turning this into now a asynchronous thing. And that's what promises are. They're wrappers around asynchronous functions. Excellent way to implement them. So even after zero time, we've got the same situation. This is still a promise pending. Even though it was zero milliseconds later, the set timeout gets put aside, the rest of the code gets run, all the synchronous code gets run, then the asynchronous stuff comes back. So this would come back, then this would come back, and then this would come back. They're all set to be zero milliseconds later, but the order that they were set aside is still implemented. And we can put a reject condition inside there if we want it as well or just to demonstrate that this does resolve and we are getting a result back at some point, we'll use another one of these set timeout function and we'll log p again and we'll do this after 10 milliseconds. So this is going to be done after these other two. And there it is. The log p from line 51, line 51, the promise resolved and this was the value that was returned. P now contains a resolved promise. Up here, it was a pending promise. Down here, resolved. If we come down below this, oops, I forgot my closing parentheses. If we come down below this and we log P again, it's happening before the asynchronous stuff. Pending again. So line 49 pending, line 53 pending. 49, 53, and then the resolved one from line 51, that's happening last. It is the last asynchronous thing. So just keep this in mind when you are doing anything like this. Set timeout, geolocation, promises, wrapping around fetch, AJAX calls with XML HTTP request, file system interactions, database calls, even DOM event listeners, they're things that are happening at some point in the future. We don't know the time, and that's what makes them asynchronous. That's what makes JavaScript set them aside to finish the synchronous stuff. If you are using any of these asynchronous things, you cannot expect to have a variable that contains the value on the next line of code. You have to wait for it, or inside this function, or inside the promise function. That is where you will say, hey, at this point in time in the future, so with a promise at the very end here, we can say p.then. That's the purpose of the then with a promise. This function right here inside the then method, that function runs when it's resolved. So I can log out whatever that val is, which is yo. And there we go. This is actually going to be executed before this one. This one is, as soon as the promise is resolved, run this code. This one is, 
when at least 10 milliseconds have, have passed, that's when I want this to happen. So you can end up in situations like this. You say, okay, I'm going to do something after zero milliseconds, and then I'm going to resolve this promise, and I've got a then method that I'm going to call, and you might expecting a certain order to happen, but you have to understand the order in which these things are being set aside impacts the order that your code is going to run and impacts whether or not you have the expected values in your variables. Okay, so I hope that has helped differentiate synchronous and asynchronous code for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.